Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, in the afternoon, I'll talk about nano electronic modeling of waters with uh, NEMO 5. We are very large groups with about 20 PhD students and four research faculty and postdocs led by Professor Gihar Klimak at the Purdue University. So here is the outline. I'll first introduce the uh, software we develop in our group, NEMO 5, and give an overview of four different research topics we do on blue waters and the summary. So to motivate it a little bit, the nanoelectronic simulations, here is a roadmap of the transistor scaling. Uh, now we are at the about 10 nanometers uh, time, and uh, I think Intel just announced the seven nanometers uh, fab in Arizona a few months ago. So yeah, we are, although it's going close to the end of Moore's law, but we're still uh, scaling down. So let's take the 22 nanometer transistor, for example. Uh, the 22 nanometer transistor, the gate length is 22 nanometer. They are almost 176 atoms. But when you take a look at the uh, cross section, uh, the active region is only eight nanometers. That equals about 64 atoms. So let's take a look at back the roadmap. Uh, when we think about the seven nanometer or five nanometer transistors, uh, the node atoms is a 46 or 40 atoms. The critical atoms is just uh, 20 or 14. And uh, when we take a look at the electrons, less than 20 electrons. This really raised the uh, requirement for atomistic uh, modeling. That's what we do with the NEMO 5 software developed in our group. So NEMO 5 actually bridges the ab initio uh, simulation all the way to realistic device simulations. So we, we map the uh, uh, the parameters get from AB initio uh, to the parameters in NEMO 5 and use that as a building block to simulate realistic devices like transistors. And in addition to transistors, NEMO 5 can do a lot of different simulations, uh, quantum dots, nanowire, LED devices, a lot of different devices. So NEMO 5 is multi-scale, multi-physics, multi-purpose nanotechnology uh, simulation software. Uh, NEMO 5 can be used both offline and online. The offline means you use it on regular HPC clusters used by uh, more than 400 research groups. And uh, companies like Intel, Samsung, TSMC, and Philips use NEMO 5 to design their products. And actually, NEMO 5 also powers nine online tools on NanoHub. Uh, by the end of February 2017, there are about 24,000 users and uh, they run about 465,000 simulations. This map here shows uh, the location of the users, so it's basically worldwide usage. Oh. Did I press the wrong button? Uh. Yeah, I think I pressed the wrong button. Okay. So. So here is a list uh, of the available configuration partial list. It's not intended for reading, just show you this uh, partial list. NEMO 5 can run a lot of different hardware. So you can run it on your own PC or Mac. You can also use a front-end application on NanoHub, and it can also be used on regional HPC clusters like Purdue. County cluster of Purdue can be used on national-wide infrastructure, Stampede, or Blue Waters, and it can also be used on the largest supercomputers like the TNH2. So now I'll go over our uh, science projects on Blue Waters. The first is the electron um, phonon scattering. So in order to model the electron phonon scattering, we need to really solve this uh, GR matrices in the equation. There are two ways to solve uh, this equation to get the GR matrices. One is to use a recursive Green's function. Uh, we call it RGF method. The other is uh, to use a full uh, dense block, so kind of a full inversion. There are, they all have their own drawbacks. For the RGF method, uh, it only used the diagonal blocks, ignoring the off-diagonal blocks, but there are physics information contained in the off-diagonal blocks, so it to, uh, ignores some of the physics. And for the dense, uh, inversion that's numerically expensive and uh, sometimes unfeasible. So we developed a uh, non-local RGF method. Uh, this method adds the, uh, the off-diagonal blocks to the RGF simulations. So in this case, we can include more physics. Uh, the red figure shows a, a model validation. Uh, the solid 
line is the result coming from the full uh, inversion. And the symbols, the dots, the square, the triangle, they are the simulations from the non-local RGF method. So we can see they actually match very well. So here's the uh, computational load of this non-local RGF method. It, in this benchmark, we use a 2 by 2 by 20 uh, nanometer nano wire with uh, one single energy point as an example. Here, the locality uh, on the axis, the non locality is proportional to the number of off diagonal blocks used in this algorithm. Uh, so, the <coughs> computational complexity is about n to the 2.4 uh, to uh, compare with the local RGF method uh, showing on the left figure. The red figure shows the peak memory usage. Uh, of course, the memory usage of non-local RGF is higher than local RGF because it uses uh, off-diagonal blocks. But compared with uh, full inversion for this case, which requires 150 gigabyte uh, memory, this non-local RGF method only uses 32 gigabyte memory. But anyway, still you know, computationally expensive and memory consuming. And in a typical simulation, it, we use 500 to 2,000 nodes on blue waters. So the second uh, work we do is uh, multi-quantum well LEDs. The left figure it's a, uh, shows, uh, schematically shows what the uh, LED uh, device looks like. And uh, the problem of the classical model is that the semi-classical transport ignores the band structure details, and it does not include the quantum effects and the distinction between continuum and discrete states is required. So we, pr we have our simulation uh, strategy, the self-consistent non-equilibrium Green's function method, NEGF method. So it has to self-consistently solve the four equations uh, in a loop. But evaluation of these four equations are also uh, numerically expensive, especially I showed the, uh, the top left uh, equation in previous uh, research topic. So here is an example of the LED device. Uh, it has 123 nanometer, about 1,000 atoms in this device. And the metric size in the simulation is 19,000 by 19,000, roughly. And uh, we have 10 voltage bias points for one current voltage IV curve. So in this case, we use 100 nodes on blue water for one bias point for uh, an average half hour. So in this case, we use 500 node hours per IV curve. So in order to use this model for real simulation design, we need to first calibrate the physics parameters, say uh, the recombination rate. Uh, in this case, we need 316 IV curves that cost about uh, 160 node hours. Then goes to the, sem the uh, a sample production run. We need to sweep different parameters in one LED device, say, uh, for example, the geometry of the device, the concentration of different elements. Uh, and we compare all this result to find a uh, mean best uh, design. In this case, we need 10 to 20 IV curves for each point in the parameter space, and uh, roughly 120 IV curves in total for one uh, design. So that requires about 60,000 uh, node hours. So really, we have a large amount of mid-sized jobs that we need a large, a large system to minimize the turnaround, of the, the turnaround time of the whole ensemble. The third is a compact model for copper green boundaries. Uh, here is also, this problem is also about the transistor. When the transistor becomes smaller and smaller, the size of interconnects also becomes smaller. And the problem is that, say, this left pie chart shows an example of power consumption of 45 nanometer transistor. About 42% of the power are consumed by interconnects. That's a lot of power. And compare that, the clock only consumes 38%. And the red figure is a, uh, shows what a uh, copper interconnect looks like. When we have very large uh, interconnect, uh, the majority of electron scattering is in, within this interconnect, so it's more like a bulk uh, scattering. But when the, uh, when the interconnects become smaller and smaller, the surface effects uh, become more and more important. So we need to 
consider green boundary and the surface roughness effects in this model to accurately model small copper interconnects. So the challenge is that, uh, yeah, still the traditional model failed to describe the uh, effect of surface roughness and green boundary individually. And uh, the biggest problem that it uses a pure fitting between, uh, between the uh, result and the parameter, so that parameter really lack physical meaning in the traditional model. So our solution is that we statistically uh, we run an ensemble of uh, of the uh, simulation, atomistic simulation of the interconnect, and uh, we get map the uh, map uh, green boundary misorientation angle with the green effect. So in this simulation, we need to run about 220 uh, nodes for one sample, and we need about 800 samples for this statistical simulation, and about 100 nodes per sample, so that's 80 nodes, hours per interconnect structure. But of course, uh, for an engineering design, we need to vary different uh, uh, size of the geometry to find the best simulations. So this also requires a large amount of hours. The last is the flying qubit modeling. Uh, yeah, the key challenge of, there are two different uh, type of qubits. One is superconducting qubits. Uh, that is scalable to only a handful of uh, qubits. The other type is semiconductor quantum dots. Uh, they are scalable, but the problem is that uh, they suffer from the decoherence upon reading. And to, in order to have a, a really usable quantum computer, uh, we need millions of qubits to allow for quantum error correction. So our solution is uh, we are simulating the flying qubits. Here flying means that the electrons are moving from the left to the right in the figure uh, versus stationary in quantum dots. So we use quantum transport to read out the qubit information for minimum interference. And uh, the quantum super superposition uh, is controlled by the gate. That's the blue box uh, in the bottom. So for this, this, uh, th this uh, picture shows an experimental device that's on the order of micrometers. It's very large to simulate atomistically. So in our simulations, we actually use 2D devices. that's smaller, but still large for atomistic simulation. It's on the order of tens or hundreds of nanometers. And uh, with the LRA, the low rank approximation and the basis reduction, each simulation still uh, requires about 1,000 nodes for 40 hours. That's really expensive. 40,000 node hours for one simulation. And to get a realistic understanding of uh, this kind of flying qubit, we need at least uh, 20 simulations. So in total, 800,000 node hours needed for this research project. Yeah, so comes to the summary. Uh, I first uh, introduced the NEMO 5, the multi-scale, multi-physics, multi-purpose. Uh, nanotechnology simulation software developed in our group. And uh, in general, I introduced that atomic scale simulations are numerically expensive, and we need blotters for two different type of jobs. Is one is large size jobs on the order of a thousand uh, nodes. We need the capability of blotter because uh, it's not that easy to run or impossible to run a thousand node jobs on campus level cluster or mid-sized national infrastructure. And we also need blue water for the mid-sized jobs. The job with about 100 nodes. We need them for the engineering design in order to minimize the turnaround time of a large ensemble to sweep uh, the parameter space. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I have.